Okay. Barada, everybody. Thank you. Let's try that again. Barada, everybody. Good, thank you. Uh, so this is day two, and I think if we look at our spin through the history, we started with the random walks, and we're about halfway down. Um, what's not shown on here is hardware, and that's a um, uh, not an oversight, but uh, let's just call it a minor omission. Um, but that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today, and uh, to begin with. And so um, we've got a, a session which is uh, entitled uh, The Connectom Connection, and I'm going to explain that uh, in a second. So um, originally it was going to be uh, four presentations. Unfortunately, uh, Nicholas Weisskopf has a stomach infection. He, he held off trying to get here, but he just couldn't make it in the end. So that's, uh, we're very sorry that he can't make it. Um, so I'm going to talk for, try and keep it relatively short. Um, I'd like to give the limelight to my uh, colleagues in Kubrick who will uh, tell you more about the Cardiff system later. Then we'll have a presentation from uh, Ralph Kimlingen from Seamus Health and Ears, then Thomas Whitzel, and then we may have a little bit of time if Thomas doesn't go over too long uh, for questions. Um, and then uh, Richard Botel will be chairing the session. And then we'll hear from Mick Mantle and then Bob Turner. So um, that's the layout of the, uh, the presentation. Um, so the National Microstructural Imaging Facility, um, it's because of the National Microstructural Imaging Facility that we were able to hold this meeting, um, as I said, with uh, extremely generous support from Siemens. And I'd just like to give you the Kubrick perspective a little bit of history of how we got into this situation. And uh, for those of you who go to ISMRM, you know that we have a Brit party. Um, it's no longer Brit party, it's Brit party and anybody else who knows a Brit, it seems. Um, but for several years, there was members of the, the British MR diffusion community found that the only time that we met was in the back of a pub on a Monday night on the other side of the world. And uh, I remember one particular time there was myself, uh, Danny Alexander, Tim Behrens, Chris Clark, uh, Jeff Parker, and lots of others. And we were basically talking diffusion and drinking beer and said, well, this is ridiculous that we only get together on the other side of the world. Let's make um, a UK diffusion MR interest group, which had two primary aims, really. One was to talk diffusion, and the second was to drink beer. And uh, this is something that we held sporadically. Uh, it's about every six months we get together. Um, and it just goes around the country. We have about 90 people show up. But that then led to, um, uh, Mike was talking about the family, the diffusion family. Um, I think we've got a really close-knit UK diffusion family, particularly collegiate, and that's led to a lot of collaborations. Um, so that kind of sets the scene a little bit. And of course, um, when we talk about MR and diffusion, we talk about wanting stronger gradients. And talking to another vendor uh, that's not present today, uh, that we were previously associated with, we said we wanted higher gradient strength. And the, the uh, response was, you guys always say you want more. You know, we give you uh, 10 millitesla per meter, you want more. You get 22 millitesla per meter, you want more. We give you 40, you want more. Give us the evidence, why do you want more? And so, this is, um, goes back, this was work uh, that came out of one of those pub conversations, and I must say all the work was really done by Danny Alexander, he was gracious enough to put me on there, but was actually looking for a practical application, uh, what would be the gradient strength you would need, and the conclusion was that the kind of measurements we wanted really needed to push this forward. And of course, uh, Van Wadeen, uh, this is an abstract from 2011, <clears throat> which was looking at the impact of gradient strength and uh, the uh, conclusion is you needed a gradient strength of about 300 millitesla per meter, which is a strange coincidence uh, about what was to soon become available or on, the, um, on the Siemens Connectom system. So as you know, since about 2004, 2005, many, many people were lo uh, lobbying for stronger gradients, and we'd effectively given up. Um, but then, oh, thanks very much, Paul. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and then we saw the, um, on the horizon, everyone got very excited about the Human Connectome Initiative, um, this 40 million pound initiative. 
And out of that, and uh, you may hear more of this from Ralph, uh, came a machine that Discover Mag magazine called the world's most advanced scanner, or the ultimate brain hacking machine. And uh, I've used these slides now for lay talks about Kubrick. So I'm going to just use them to you. Um, of course, it doesn't look like the ultimate brain hacking machine when it's got the cover on. But this quote is fantastic. The Connectom scanner boasts the most advanced brain imaging technology in the world. It's poised to be the Hubble Space Telescope of neuroscience. Uh, nobody mentions or remembers that the Hubble Space Telescope didn't work for a couple of years. Um, <laughs> And my university keeps insisting on calling it the Hubble telescope of the mind, uh, which is uh, terrible. So um, what happened then? I mentioned the UK community. Um, I think all these names will be incredibly familiar to you as uh, key contributors to the field. Um, we got together and said, look, you know, it's great that there's a Connectom scanner over in the US, but we really think we could uh, make use of something like that here in the UK. So we got together. And um, these are the diffusion investigators on, the, on a grant application um, to establish what we call the National Microstructural Imaging Facility. And quite simply, we signed up and committed to collaborate and work together and um, apply to the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council for a grant that would facilitate travel uh, to Cardiff to work together to facilitate um, uh, experimental time on the system and, of course, to purchase the equipment. Um, it turned out there's also a lot of interest from across Europe of people who were willing and, and interested to come and to use the kit and further afield. So then we went, then went to the various vendors and of course we were absolutely delighted when um, Siemens agreed to construct the second Connectom for us here in Cardiff. So the bid actually allowed us to purchase the Connectom scanner but also a scope field camera um, and you can see this on the tour at lunchtime today. This allows us to measure time varying magnetic fields so we can quantify eddy currents, etc., without relying on image registration. And then an optical tracking system. We're still uh, tendering for that. But the idea is if we want to correct for motion and distortion, we don't have to rely on image registration and we can do it more accurately. So the strategic objectives was to establish the National Microstructural Imaging Facility to promote and support the use of the NMIF for the development of new methods. Uh, to engage academic and industrial colleagues, and that's my open invitation to you guys, and I'll mention it again later, that you're extremely welcome to come and use the kit. The, the remit of the grant was that we would make this widely available to the whole community. So that's my invitation to you, and to engage the public through art science collaborations. That's a really exciting part to us, but we don't have time to go into it. I can tell you over coffee about the art. So, there we are. Uh, uh, this is not photoshopped. A pot of gold at the end of our rainbow. Uh, the Connectom uh, was installed. Um, I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Ralph, but just to show you our little history, this was the arrival of the uh, insert. It weighed about 1.5 tonnes. Um, this is where the water, uh, chilling, uh, chilled water would go in. And you can see the power cables here. Pretty impressive, pretty beefy. I just thought you may not have seen this, and you won't see it when you go on the tour. Um, we watched these guys uh, put the insert in. It had to be correct within about a millimeter. And um, this is a, a video you can see just how long it would take with the spirit level, just checking is it exactly right. Um, we could watch this entire video, but we don't have time, um, even with Nick Weisskopf not arriving. But there is a mad chicken in the, in the um, room. You might hear it in a second. <laughs> So that's the, uh, the jack that's just positioned, it's just right to get it in. So anyway, um, then the other thing of course, is apart from those one, is you need the power. We have the power, these are the power cables that we were the most impressed by. Uh, four lots of 160 amps, so we had our uh, substation built to the centre. And again, this is from that Discover magazine, I just love the hyperbole. It delivers a whopping 24 megawatts of power to the scanner, equivalent to the energy used by a nuclear power fast attack submarine. So we show this to uh, members of the public, and funnily enough, they don't volunteer to go in. So this is the history of our Connectom. This was it packaged, and you can see the assembly through to the finished job. Um, just to compare, on our old scanner, this was um, charm data, and 25-minute um, scan B was 2,500. This was our first attempt at doing charmed with a 15-minute scan going up to 7,000. And I think you'll agree that the signal-to-noise is substantially better. So we were pretty pleased 
with that. There's some inhomogeneities in the, in the um, uh, there's a front back gradient. This was due to coil imperfections, which has since been rectified. Now, explain to Her Majesty that um, we're looking at the um, uh, a Van Gelderen model of restricted diffusion in glass cylinders, uh, and we're looking in the limit of long diffusion times, wasn't going to wash. So what we wanted to do is to present it with an image that would try to capture the excitement of what we could show. This is um, Bernd Montag, who's CEO of uh, Siemens Health and Ears, and uh, all effort was put in to helping us create something that was visual and striking. So I was put into the scanner. Um, we then sent the data off to um, the visualization labs. Uh, Dorin Komenichu and his team were incredibly helpful and used the cinematic rendering technique under the Singo uh, pipeline. And um, it's the same technique that's used to visualize hairs, et cetera, in um, Pixar. And I'm just going to play the movie. So this is, this is my brain. Let me just uh, temporarily make the light slow. And you can just see the, uh, the kind of aesthetic qualities. Of course, it doesn't carry any quantitative information, but I think some of you might not have seen this before, and I thought it was quite nice to show it. Certainly, um, actually, Her Majesty only just said, ew, when she saw it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, can't please all the people all of the time, I guess. Um, so, yeah, uh, I won't show you this one. But we've just been then uh, uh, seeing what we can see, just some fairly obvious things, looking at things like the restricted volume fraction in multiple sclerosis. You can see the lesion here. Um, this is work with uh, Greg Parker, Chantal Tax, and Umesh Rudrapatna. What we then do is, um, using Greg's automated tract extraction tool, we can then pull out the paths that pass through here, and obviously you can see uh, a quantitative estimate of the axonal properties within this pathway. This is just uh, data at 1.6 millimeter isotropic resolution, and you can see signal noise pretty nice. This is the restricted volume fraction, so we're very pleased with those results. Chantal has been working on reproducibility, and uh, we'll be able to show you that on the tour. Uh, with Silvio DeSantis, and again, there's more on the tour. We've been looking at, obviously, things like axon uh, diameter mapping. Um, I don't want to steal her glory too much. I've just to say that, uh, obviously, we're working on that. We're getting quite uh, pleased and enthused with the results that we're getting. Silvia's done some work. Uh, you'll have seen the paper with the work she did in Maastricht, looking at including uh, diffusion time dependence in the extra axonal space. Um, actually, when we've looked at the same sort of results on the uh, system going up to 300 millitesla per meter, that time dependence seems to have less of an impact. And again, um, Sylvia can tell you more about that on the, on the tour. The other thing we've been uh, looking at uh, was to answer to Greg Stanage's question, why don't you marry T2 in diffusion? Uh, well, this is the, uh, the courtship that will probably lead to a marriage. Um, and again, this is work led by Chantal and helped by Umesh. And you can see we're varying the uh, echo time along the vertical horizontal axis and going up to B values of 7,000. We didn't anticipate that we would see much signal over here, but if we just uh, rescale, you can see actually there's quite a bit of signal there. Let's just zoom in. It doesn't look like much to the, to the lay observer, but there's actually uh, quite a bit of signal left there. So the idea then, um, sorry, it's distorted in the, uh, in the conversion here, is to try to do this 2D correlation experiments to pull out the different components. And again, I'm going to leave the glory to Chantal, um, but just to say we've got some promising early results. So if you want to see more, see Chantal on the lunchtime, lunchtime tour, or this work has just been accepted for oral presentation at ISMRM. But uh, Kubrick is closer than Hawaii. Uh, I'm just going to leave this hanging. If you uh, like what you see next door, there are some opportunities for jobs to come and work on the Connectom system. And I just want to leave it there, really, I, um, and just to talk about this idea of connecting the Connectoms. It doesn't matter what you call it, whether you call it the ultimate brain hacking machine, the National Microstructural Imaging Facility, or in Leipzig now, the super brain scanner. See, we all like hyperbole. The British are a bit more reserved, perhaps. Um, there's three of these systems, and we're extremely grateful to Siemens Health and Ears uh, for giving this opportunity to the whole community. And I would say, although these are based here, and I think I echo the comments of the other two centers, uh, we really do see this as a facility for the whole community. And in the concept of family, we'd welcome you over to uh, come and make use of um, the kit. 
So that's all I wanted to say. I want to keep it short and sweet. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, but uh, so I'll take questions.